Hi, this is Nandana Devsan and you're listening to me on That's Total Mom Sense. So tell us a little bit about your childhood, you know, um, growing up in, in Calcutta. Are there any experiences that still feel very vivid in your mind? It was an intensely uh, culturally and politically alive atmosphere where a lot of the um, poetry that was being written, the plays that were being uh, produced, the songs that were being performed, uh, were infused by the energy, uh, by this kind of revel, this the spirit of revolution, and that was um, very infectious. Because we grew up in a family where there were no boys or men, we, without making a song and dance about it, we grew up believing that being a girl was in no way an impediment to anything, and not because we felt that. There weren't challenges that you meet as a girl because we saw our mother and our grandmother go through challenges themselves and the way they navigated those challenges uh, taught us a lot, but uh, we never felt that there were things that we could not do because we were girls. Although there were unending demands on your time, A few years ago, you had somehow managed to find several days for us to translate together my bedtime book for children, not yet. The book is a playful dialogue and rhyme between a mother and a child. A naughty little girl finds countless excuses not to go to bed, while her ever patient mother is determined to put her to sleep. The literal Bengali translation of not yet is Akonina, but you had laughed your own little girl laugh and declared, no, no, the girl must be much more emphatic. She will say, Ekunina, Ekunina. Well, this obstinate daughter of yours kept saying to her mother in the last few weeks, Ekunina, Ekunina. Could you hear me, Ma? Not too long ago, I pulled a big blue book from our Kolkata shelf, 365 Bedtime Stories. When I opened it, out fell a red gold rush of leaves, oaks, maples, and ferns, collected in London when I was a toddler. We had gathered them together in the woods at the bottom of the hill where we lived. One night, as you were reading to me about Tinkerbell, I interrupted you with a technical question. What are fairy wings made of? Butterfly wings, bird feathers, or huge petals? There are all kinds of fairies, you see, you replied, just as there are all kinds of people. Do all fairies look like you? I persisted. I don't think so, you smiled. Fairies are very, very beautiful. But Ma, I protested, you're the most beautiful person in the world. You laughed much (laughs) more closely than Tinkerbell would. As you drew heavy curtains over tall windows, every little girl believes that about their mother, Tumpush. Well, Ma, I've grown up a bit. My world has grown up a lot. I left home as a child and made beautiful friends who became my family. In my work, I've met many beautiful faces, walked with beautiful figures. I've fallen in love with beautiful minds. You grew up too. More books published, many awards won. A few more clashes with your stubbornly loving daughters. Around your eyes, a few more lines, celebrating years of full-throated life. A few more world tours, many with me, when you swept me away with your limitless appetite for discovery, your infectious sense of wonder. Remember that list we made some years ago of unvisited countries that you absolutely had to explore? Wheelchair in tow, we made it to most entries on that list, China, Egypt, South Africa, but not Myanmar. Each time we traveled, you transformed our adventures into provocative essays or best-selling books. And on every trip, we shared even more pleasures together than our plentiful arguments. Yes, we did have fights. I cried when you didn't understand. I begged you not to nag. I yelled at you when I was upset with someone else. I watched in panic as tears welled up in your ever adolescent eyes. 
But I am as sure today as I was that night in London that even if you had not been my mother, even if that most precious accident of birth had by rights been the beginning of someone else's story, even if I'd met you in any of your other roles as a poet, professor, painter, friend, or a stranger on a plane, you would still be the most beautiful person I could ever have met. At the end of Not Yet, the daughter asks, Ma, did you turn out the light? And the mother replies, yes, my dear. Now, good night. So tell us about a mom sense moment that you've experienced where you kind of trusted your intuition as Megla's mother. There were so many times that um, I, it looked like it was not going to be possible for us to bring Megla home. My mother had a very lovely way of describing it because it actually took um, almost a year. And I mean, actually the whole process took over 10 years, but she said, well, you know, that's how long it takes to uh, have a pregnancy and give birth to a child. So you went <laughs> through that process. Right. And that's just, you know, that's, that's just the way it was supposed to be.